Richard. All right, let's get started. Welcome to the Miami Township Board of Trustees meeting in May 1st, 2023. Um, I'd like to call the meeting to order. Um, introductions. introductions. Around the room introductions, we have with us all three trustees, our esteemed um, zoning inspector and members of the public. We want to introduce, what do you wish to? Uh, I would like to have everyone introduce themselves. Okay, cool. Janet Murray. Jen. Jed Hanna. Eric Johnson. Hello, Eric. Jennifer Adams. Kathy Garrison. Jeff Garrison. Joe Krychek. Nicole Marvin. Okay. Um, how do I see this meeting going? Our, our primary um, item on the agenda is um, solar issues. Um, we have a little bit of township business and we're going to do our best to keep that um, in f efficient and in focus and not get drag it um, and into details and minutia. Um, and then talk about two different items regarding solar, give people a chance to speak, and I have one little item of, after we're done with that executive session personnel thing, so we'll put that at the end so people don't have to endure that. Um, at first, I'd like to entertain a motion to adopt the minutes of April 17th. So moved. I'll second. Um, are you moving a second? Any further discussion? No, no. Shall we vote? It's been moved and seconded to adopt the minutes of the April 17th, 2023 meeting. Uh, Mr. Mutcher? Yes. Mr. Hoffman? Yes. Mr. Yes. Minutes are approved. Okay. Is that two meetings in a row that we haven't made any changes? No. Very, very likely. Well, Chris and I sometimes make changes via email. <laughs> um, with, with our very good um, records keeper, Cynthia, who's all over it. Um, now I'll entertain, entertain a motion to pay our bills in the amount of... Okay, I know why it's big now. $205,847.24. That's $7,209.34 from the general fund. Fire and rescue, $35,587. Cemetery fund, $597.14. EMS billing, $3,536.03. Road and bridge, $2,240.24. And, um, this explains a lot. The general bond retirement, $156,677.49. Right, got a motion to pay our bills? I so move. Second. Any further discussion? No. So we moved and seconded to uh, approve payment of bills in the amount of $205,847.24 as enumerated. Mr. Hollison. Yes. Mr. Mutcher. Yes. Ms. Moyer. Yes. The motion is approved. Okay. Um, our correspondence, we had a number of people, some of them in this room. Um, well, I'll just do go down. Steve Adam, Township Residents, in favor of exclusionary zone for utility scale solar for the entire township. Um, Ohio Township Association, um, let us know some excellent training opportunities. Actually, I saw one um, in there for zoning commissions and how to involve more public in, in their um, their meetings. So I thought that was interesting. I might go to that. Um, we received the Kingwood Solar Notice to Appeal to the Ohio Supreme Court. Um, Miami Township wrote a letter of support to MVRPC for their Carbon Pollution Reduction Grant. Um, OPER's webinar for retire, imminent retirees. Um, Nicole Marvin, Township Residents, um, thank you for, you sent us multiple things. One was an interesting Pickaway County Fire Chiefs Association, opposition to utility scale solar due to the inadequacy of resources available for rural fire departments to d respond to potential problems. Um, and that was interesting. She also sent us something about Nestle Wood Solar. Another um, 
de solar development by the same company who is doing the Kingwood Vesper Energy um, citizens concern on that one. Um, Green County Regional Planning agenda for their board meeting. Um, NBRPC an invitation to a virtual meeting for NIPS's implementation strategy of the Hebel Creek Mad River watershed. And I was just about to tell Don something. He left. That was, anyway, we should discuss that. It's not relevant to the, but that, that might be something we're very interested in attending, at least I am. Bob and Tia, Tia Houston urged an exclusion zone for solar development 50 megawatts or larger and for a temporary moratorium on smaller commercial solar until appropriate zoning regulations are established and adopted. Maggie Stack, um, very direct, not in favor of utility scale solar in Miami Township. Eli Hurwitz, um, happily applied, it was an application of interest to serve on the Township Board of Zoning Appeals. Um, I think he said either as on the board or as a alternate. alternate. And Shep Anderson, I don't know if Shep's here tonight, um, I don't think so. Strong support to establish exclusion zone to prevent utility scale solar in the township. And um, so we'll go through our township business and then get to the reason why most people are here today. Um, our, well, this will be easy, our fire department report. Um, Colin can't make it today. Um, is it necessary to read his stuff? Or is this just well, there's only like two things there. He's not gonna be here. He's not gonna be here. And, and 35 EMS incidents. This is always interesting. 35 risk calls since our last meeting two weeks mm -hmm. ago. 35 EMS incidents and five five fire incidents. That's pretty high. Um, and then the one in the middle, really the only one in the public interest. Guidelines or events? We are developing guidelines, says Colin, for large-scale events in the township that include fire code and staffing requirements. I plan to have a draft to you by the next meeting. And the rest is just expenses. Um, Dan, our cemetery roads guy, also has the night off. He worked in the rain all day. Um, anything about roads, fellow trustees, cemeteries? I did, I did a tour yesterday and roads look uh, not as good as they did on the meeting before because of the grass and everything else that's growing. And we are very close to, to beginning uh, road berm mowing and trimming all those uh, Labor intensive spring activities. spring time uh, activities. Yeah, uh, there were um, I, know, I wrote it down four barrels since our last meeting. There were three in, or one in Clifton, three in Glen Forest, uh, including one at the New Oak Grove uh, Cemetery. And uh, I do want to point out that that one is actually the very first full body burial underneath uh, an oak tree. Wow. Not an old oak tree because they're too right, big to move. Tree. But a year from today, um, it would be the time to plant the tree on this person's grave. We're, we're, we're giving it a year to let the, the soil settle uh, so the tree doesn't get plenty. But there will be there will be one tree there a year from today. And we have uh, we have multiple other ones that are that are sold, but people are still walking wait, waiting for their time to <laughs> go rush them. Enjoy the oak, the, uh, oak trees. Sign up. Uh, was that? It? We still have. Uh, yeah, we still have no interest through the govdeals.com on the snowplow and um, the old truck. Snowplow and the uh, bush hog that we have for sale. So, are you saying we have a, a dump truck for sale for we about do. ten thousand, fifteen thousand dollars? <laughs> Around there, yeah. And a bush hog. Yep. We do. There might be some takers well, in the audience. Yeah, well, right. model is. <laughs> <laughs> it's an F four fifty. It's four wheel drive. Uh, it's a dump truck. It's got a stainless steel bed on it. Uh, it's got an eight foot plow. It's got a uh, salt spreader. 
It's got a lot of maintenance. It's got about 109,000 miles on it, I think. Uh, but it's had regular maintenance. Not would you do? A, would you do a bundle? <laughs> uh, Possible. I'm also, as long as I'm on that, I'm going to ask our attorney what the process is for disposing of equipment that we can't dispose of at the regular way we're supposed to dispose of them. We're not going to sit on these things for the rest of our lives. So like she will, or, like or just to a private private person. I mean, we've got multiple people who are willing to buy it oh. for a particular amount, oh. but they're not willing to go on the, on the website and bid the amount that we set at the minimum. Oh. So we could sell it tomorrow. But, okay. So anyway, I'll, I'll ask for that advice and report back. Okay. That's all I have for Rotary Cemetery. And having promised to be brief at mm -hmm. this part, I'm going to break that rule because, you know, <laughs> oh, really? Chris came to us and said, he will, we have this Oak Grove Cemetery that's going to be all swamp white oak. And I was incredulous. It's like, really, all why swamp white oak? Really, you're going to plant all the same tree on a grid? And then I went to Washington, D.C and went to the 9-11 Memorial, and it's a pretty big acreage. And um, there's beautiful fountains, you know, in, this, in the print of the building. And then I started reading that they decided to do all the same tree on a grid, 20 feet apart, or was it? I forget, so and was they were going to be all swamp white oak. And I thought, <laughs> how does lightning strike twice like that? That's So it gave them some credibility. That, <laughs> They look pretty good, um, so that's that's short. Um, fiscal officers report. We have an, we have a our fiscal officer left us with a resolution. Um, resolution 2023-25, authorization of advance payment. Whereas the need to subsidize the fire one two one nine one presented itself in December of twenty twenty two, right before our levy passed. Thank you again, people of Miami Township. Absolutely. Now, therefore, the trustees authorize the repayment from our general fund. No, repayment from our fire fund back to our general fund. The first advance was a hundred thousand dollars, and the second forty thousand, and we're going to pay ourselves back. Um, and I have a motion to do such. So moved. Second. Hearing a motion and a second, is there any further discussion? No, hi. Thanks for taking care of that, Chris. May we vote? It's been moved and seconded to approve resolution 2023-25, authorization of advance repayment as specified. Uh, Mr. Mutcher. Yes. Mr. Hollister. Yes. Mr. Moyer. Yes. Resolution is approved. Um, Mr. Zoning Inspector. Whoa, 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 whoa. Fiscal officer report not finished yet. I have two quick questions, if that's all right, that yes. I might address to the chair because I'm sure she would be able to take care of these and get us answers. Um, looking through some financials, I noticed that our, uh, sorry everybody, these are numbers. Our general fund ba balance as of uh, the prior meeting, uh, April 19th, was $54,147.50. As of today, it's now $204,072.25. And for the life of me, I can't understand where we picked up a quick $170,000 from nowhere. Well, not knowing how revenues are distributed throughout the year, I mean, I know they come in a little bit at a time. I we don't get another distribution in the general fund until September. What was the that. resolution you just voted on? Yeah. That moved money? That moved money, yes. But that would not have been in this. Oh, yeah, okay. then we just made that motion. Because that, that hadn't happened. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, so, we shall ask Margaret. Was the bond was that, that, that was a bill. Well, it's suspiciously uh, uh, similar to the amount we just moved. Perhaps she was anticipating the payback and she did it herself without a resolution. But I will find well, out. Well, we can ask. We will ask. The last thing I noticed was on our revenue status, uh, and it's been this way apparently for a while, and, and I guess I didn't catch it. Our final budget for, for the general fund on general property tax, real estate tax, 
the final budget is $213,875. And that number should be, if, if you look at the next line, revenue to date, which is $59,558. That's our first half distribution. Our second half distribution would be that number times two, which should be our final budget. So I'm not sure why our final budget is a hundred and some jillion dollars more than what it actually should be. Are you with me? What you're saying, so final, that you I'm looking at that line and I'm not following what you said. Okay. This number here. Yes should be twice this number. Okay. This is the yearly budget. We get this twice a year. It should be two times, and that's what it is. 120,000 as opposed to 230. But when you check out year-to-date revenues received, it's only 27%, so that checks out, because 59 times, 60 times three would be, no, that wouldn't even work. Well, no. It's actually, you, you are correct, it's about 27% of the revenue we expect to receive. Uh, no, that number doesn't even make sense. I mean, it would be, if this was the double number, if we would have received about 20% of 27% of the total amount, 120,000, not 217. Anyway, if... But why would you say it's double if we've only received 27% so far? This 27% should be 20%, 27% of, of our final budget. Right, that seems to be like it would be around 59 grand. Our final budget should be tw two times 59,000. We'll get that twice a year, it should be 120,000. And that is reflected on, on our budgets, our, our auditor's certified uh, estimate of resources. His estimated was 130? Yes. What's that? I'm just curious. So, if okay. perhaps we could at some time go yeah. through those. Yeah, the revenue question. My recollection uh, is that the fiscal officer is to attend the meeting every 90 days. Is that right? And she has. She attended um, January, so it's Jan every quarter, she was attend quarterly. So she, January, that's January, February, March, and she will be attending, she plans to attend the second, the second meeting in May. Okay. So, yeah, we'll get, I'll get together with her, ask those questions, and maybe she'll report to us in that meeting. Great. Cool, thanks. That's all I have. Anything else for uh, fiscal matters, Don Hollister? Nope. All right, now zoning inspector. Okay, I haven't issued any permits since I last saw you, and that wasn't because I was in France, that was because nobody asked for any permits. <laughs> um, the zoning commission also met while I was out of town. I've seen their preliminary minutes, not, not the official minutes, and they um, basically discussed, uh, as they have been, uh, any needs for modifying temporary use permit section of the code. Say that one more time. They're, they have been studying and discussing modifying the, the temporary use permit section of the code. It's, it's, the, it's in, it's in the, the Board of Zoning Appeals Chapter 18. Yes, yeah, I'm familiar with it. I, I wondered if you said they have the document now ready to... They don't have, they, no, they don't have a draft yet, okay. but they have they had a, a work session and then had specific topics to discuss and, and did sort of the homework of, all right, how does this reflect the, um, the comprehensive plan? How, does, how do, do we define the terms that, are, that we're using? In other words, what does temporary mean? Yeah. Um, the, that kind of discussion took place. I, as I said, I wasn't there. I just read the preliminary meetings. Um, and I don't have any, well, um, Wednesday evening there will be a Board of Zoning Appeals hearing. It's another request from, from Steve Weary to host Dave Chappelle shows on his property. In this room? In this room. At 7 o'clock. 15 shows? 
It's a, yeah, it's a different quantity. I don't memorize these things. It's fewer shows than last year, but the same capacity. I think it's 12. And it's over the, Between it's over a slightly longer period. So, much less frequent. Okay. Well, I, not necessarily oh, less right. frequent, right. less total show. Less total. Right. Okay. And if, if any of you want more details on that, I can send I think, the application on to received, you. I don't know how I received the application, but I did. you got a copy? I may have sent yeah, it Yeah, I think to maybe you, you did. Okay. Hollist, Mr. Hollister or Mr. Meacher, anything else for our zoning inspector? Um, not specific, but the conversation this evening will, will, <laughs> will be related. Yeah, yes, we'll, but that's... Good. So hopefully he doesn't leave us. No, I'm not going yeah. anywhere. So last week, last last meeting, Chris and brought up the the idea of a, having a moratorium on small scale solar for the purpose of writing zoning regulations for the zoning commission to write zoning regulations for. S Facilities less than 50 megawatts. Hollister reignited the um, idea then of a moratorium on large scale solar in the township. A ban. A ban. That is, that we asked the county well, commission to use their authority to prohibit. Even though this is a pretty well educated group of people. Here, I thought I. See if you can make that work. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Because this will. Actually, we put off for a long time having a discussion about that. We had the original hearing, and we put up off a long time, just us three discussing things, because we're not really allowed to discuss things outside of meeting. Right. And we always put it off, so. Oh. Um, it would help if I plugged in the um, cable. So I, I mostly I'm putting these up so we all have a, a, a set of facts that, um, What am I doing wrong? Don't ask me. Eric, I think this is uh, directed towards you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's, I have this. This is in the wall. Um, well, we could all just huddle around here. There are not that many people here. <laughs> Oh, well, something just changed. If, it, if anybody has any the words are there now, is there a way of oh. making that the full screen? Uh, no, because I'm not getting the same thing there. Uh, and now my, oh, I pressed the wrong button. Now I've, now I've really done it. <laughs> I brought it in this test ahead of time and didn't put it in. And, and the last words Danny said to me <laughs> is press laptop. But I don't know where he was when he said press laptop. Chris is going to do it. No, no I'm not. I just wanted to make sure when you said press laptop, I knew there was an option there, but it is press. Yeah. So you're there. Something changed. Something, yeah. yeah, I pressed off because you, yeah. you know I gotta plug it, and plug it back in. Yeah, <laughs> I can kill a minute to go go kill me. Talking, yeah. I'm good at that. While we are waiting, uh, I always think it's a good idea that we all kind of begin on the same page when we're having a discussion. This discussion uh, surrounds zoning and land use, and et cetera. I want to make it very clear the process that townships go through with regards to zoning. 
the main point being that the Board of Zoning Appeals, hot dog, now that I've started talking, board, the, board, the Board of Trustees uh, have very, very little to do with zoning. They have nothing to do with, well, they have very, very little to do with zoning code. We do not write zoning code. Uh, we can initiate it, but we don't write any of it. That's the Zoning Commission's responsibility. We can approve, we can deny, and we can modify to some extent, but I'm not sure the exact extent, any proposal that has come from the Zoning Commission to the Board of Trustees with a recommendation for adoption. That's our sole responsibility. We approve it, we deny it, or we modify it. We don't, we don't go to the Zoning Commission, we don't ask them to do this or that or the other thing. Uh, I mean, we, you know, we, can, we can suggest things, but we, you know, we don't have a direct interaction. Now, the Zoning Commission, having said that, being the body that does the writing of the zoning code, has always been very closely tied to our comprehensive land use plan. They pretty much will not write code that contradicts what may be in the plan in their interpretation of what should happen in Miami Township. Speaking of the comprehensive plan, again, the Board of Zoning, or the Board of Zoning, I'm attached to that, the Board of Trustees have zero input with a comprehensive land use plan, which I always thought was kind of crazy, but that's the case. We this have, is the state of Ohio, by the way. This yeah. isn't something that we decided among ourselves. We have no input. If the Zoning Commission decides they want to, um, uh, uh, among themselves, decides they want to turn the township into Walmarts and Kohl's and Targets from here to Clifton, they can write a comprehensive plan that says that, and then write zoning code that Correct. However, Correct. We, we choose at a point the zoning commission members. That's true, we do. <laughs> but you can't take them away. No, that's right. We cannot take them away because we with disagree. With good cause, we can. With good cause. Yeah, but good cause would be you don't like <laughs> Oh, they were writing. Well, if, if, you, if you permitted a Walmart, for example, which is preposterous, but that and it wasn't following our latest plan, comprehensive plan, we could say, well, you guys are just done. Uh, okay, well, then, <laughs> who knows? That may be not. Yeah, let's be said. It's not okay, a common so, problem. So, so back to the, the issue this evening, as Marilyn said, I did recommend a couple of meetings ago this moratorium, and that was based on, on a couple of things. The biggest was that uh, the state of Ohio, the legislature by the state of Ohio, uh, had has written legislation that enables uh, townships to take on the uh, authority of regulating small-scale solar, solar projects, uh, commercial, uh, in, uh, commercial, residential, agricultural, uh, in any way, shape, and form. Um, and because they have, that takes us into the kind of the funny no man's land of now we can but we have no regulations on the book because the Zoning Commission hasn't written it. Now, but the Zoning Commission may or may not approve themselves of solar projects within Miami Township and decide not to write any zoning regulations at all to, to bring before the board. So we wouldn't be able to uh, approve or, or, or deny those. In addition to that, the Township Association of the State of Ohio, in conjunction with our personal, not our personal, but our township legal, represent, legal representatives, have uh, spent considerable effort drafting um, small scale, under 50 megawatts, megawatts again, small scale zoning regulations, a template, a suggestion for townships within the State of Ohio that if they so choose, they can uh, uh, ask their zoning commissions um, to, um, to undertake a review of those for adoption. We have not done that yet. Um, these things don't go that quickly. Well, and let me say one thing about those, the, that template. It still has lots of fill-in-the-blanks in it. Sure. So right. the, 
how strict or lenient or, or whatever that is, is not what they're, in other words, they're not recommending how much solar there should be in the township. They're just saying, here is language for right. regulating. Right. So back to the issue at hand, the moratorium. It was my intention to request the board issue a moratorium on solar projects in Miami Township for a period of six months. This is temporary, this is not permanent. The six months would give, hopefully, the Zoning Commission the time to reflect on how they feel about small scale zoning within Miami Township and how closely they think that might conflict or agree with our comprehensive land use plan and perhaps necessitate a, a, a review of the comprehensive plan in order to get more public opinion so that they can make the, the best uh, educated decisions that, uh, that they're embodied to do, to bring to us. That's what that was for, six months, for them to be able to give a review. This is, I don't believe, and we can speak to the board, but I don't believe this is encouraging um, elimination of solar in Miami Township or um, encouraging its, its, you know, by having a potential set of zoning codes, encouraging the adoption of um, medium-scale, small-scale solar in the, in the township. Um, Don had mentioned this briefly, and, and it was my opinion that, uh, and I suggested at the same time that we asked the, the township, or the, uh, the Green County Commissioners, to also put a moratorium for six months on large-scale solar projects in the township. My idea was, within that time, assuming the Zoning Commission completes their work, makes them a recommendation to us as to how they feel Miami Township uh, wants to proceed with, with solar uh, utilities in the township, then we can use that as the basis for making a permanent recommend or a permanent request to the commissioners or re resetting that, well, it would fall off in six months, but let's just say the zoning commission comes back and they said they're 100% against solar of any way, shape, or form in the township. They will not write zoning code for it, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. All right. The board has that information now from our zoning officials and the people who are in charge of that. This would give us strength to make the request to the commissioners to put a permanent ban, a restriction on large scale zoning in uh, Miami Township. Without that, we don't really know what the people want to do. Uh, we've had some public meetings, uh, certainly don't represent the whole of uh, residents who may or may not be involved with solar or in the past, present, or future, but we've had some and they've been well attended. And we would hope that if this comes to a point where the Zoning Commission uh, needs to review the, comp the comprehensive plan, we would have more of those meetings and uh, here or go to various places within the township and, and, try and, and try and get a better handle of it. So that was my idea for, uh, for bringing forth this idea for a, a, um, a moratorium locally on a small scale and, and well, township-wide on the, on the large scale. Neither of those things are set in stone. That's kind of what we're here for, is to, to work through the nuts and bolts of that, whether we even want to uh, do either one of those, and hopefully we'll get to that. The very last thing I want to say before I hand this back to Marilyn is, um, I asked our, our legal representative to, to write up a resolution uh, reflecting a moratorium. I guess I didn't make it clear, uh, even though the template that, that her law firm um, put forth for potential zoning regulations does basically exempt residential properties from any restrictions on, on small scale zoning. Let's call it um, solar panels on single family structures. Let's say it's like that. For, for, you know, for personal use. Uh, that is exempted in the draft plan that would, append, would eventually go to the Zoning Commission. 
It doesn't say that specifically in the moratorium, but if we get to that tonight, I'm going to uh, recommend that we add a line that's, that specifically exempts residential single family homes from uh, uh, using their structure for, you know, for, for solar purposes for their own use. Yeah. Not using their land specifically because there's, then you get setbacks and heights and accessory building, all the rest of that stuff that goes with zoning. But for anybody who wanted to put panels on their homes or side panels or, or those sorts of things, that would be exempted from the moratorium, in my opinion. That's all I got. Madam Chair? Well, I don't got, got two topics here. Yeah, that's, yes, what I, that's what I was about to say. Yes, we do. I don't see them as related as you do. I was going to start with the large, but since we started with the small and since you brought something we get start. Um, this yeah, was passed in January. You know, as, as Chris said, it gives our, our zoning um, allows the Board of Township Trustees to I should say um, our zoning commission, but um, we all know that. Um, the questions I had was, uh, my whole thing is how do we get a, to give, well, I'll get to the other question if, if it's related to the big solar later, but how do we, I feel like if we give six months to our zoning commission, here's six months, go figure it out. I don't see how the public gets involved in that process, and that, that's a sticking point with me. Um, will the public be, for example, will it be a permitted use? I'm going to guess probably not. Will it, be, will it be conditional use? I've heard you speak on it somewhat, Richard. I don't know what your answer to that would be. How will, if it's based on a long-range comprehensive plan that was written, a decade or so ago, how how does the public interact with that? How how, how does the public? How do we get public? Let me behavior? quickly answer that. That the zoning commission, of course, their meetings are always public, right? So anybody can come to any meeting that they want to. Second is that when they have a draft, the first two things that happen is that regional planning reviews it, and they have a public hearing. So it, that, it never even gets to the, to the trustees yeah. for their yay or nay or modification until there has been public involvement. So... It, and it's, it's the same as any other I was wondering legislative if process. because there's so much opinion on this or um, input, it, is, is there a way that we could invite the public or some educated members of the public in before you get to the When the Zoning Commission was working on the comprehensive land use plan, it held several special meetings inviting the public to come and give input. Um, they are not unaware of the public. I realize that, Richard. So that, leading back to last week when I suggested that the township, and you almost suggested tonight, which you, that we hold meetings. You said, Last week, when, when, I, when I suggested we hold meetings on particular topics in order to get public, to educate, kind of educate and get public input, that you asked me if I wanted to do the Zoning Commission's job for them. Tonight, it's sounding more like we would have. I, I don't know that I subscribe to that completely hands off. Are we not allowed to host meetings, invite conversation? Sure. As long as I we're not so. leading it. Um. I'm just. Yeah, that information is, is, is going to be valuable valuable to us in the end product of where something comes to us. And if we think the Zoning Commission is recommending that we have, you know, all, all zoning uh, uh, available for solar anywhere and everywhere, yet we've had uh, half a dozen, let's say half a dozen public meetings of our own, and we don't really have the same opinion, then we vote against the zoning commission's recommendation, but we can't have we can't hold public meetings. Maybe in conjunction with the zoning commission, no, we cannot do that. Such no, that we cannot do that. We can educate the public so that they can participate in there. Maybe so, but the zoning commission is not going to be here with us having right. been doing that. 
Uh, but I would say to you that I would get into that situation where you're gathering a whole lot of information that the Zoning Commission doesn't know about, and then you use it to contradict what the Zoning Commission does. That doesn't make any sense to me at all. In other words, if you're, if you're collecting information, then pass it on to the Zoning Commission. Right. Once Passing it on is one thing, having the Zoning no, Commission. No, I agree. Yeah, I agree with both of no, them. But pass, yeah. pass it on. Yeah. Okay. Um, Mr. Craig, you want to check? Wanted to just say something? Well, here, here's my opinion. We, we've been in this conversation for years. I mean, we're not just months. There's been public meetings, and then there's opinions on the street. If a person is... Uh, what's the word I want to use? Passionate enough to attend the meeting, that means that they're taking it serious and they want to participate in, in, in all this stuff. If, if you can walk down the street and they know your position or our position in, in, the, in the community, and they stop you and give an opinion, but they're not willing to come to the meetings and, and, and make changes or write rules or give advice or give opinions to the the, to the zoning and or to the parent towns of trustees. How long do you keep trying to educate somebody on the, what's been taking place for how long? When, when do you stop that? And because, if, if, again, you, at some point you have to take what you've gotten and, and use that and get off of square one. Well, In theory, that's well, what the six months. Period. Yes, I'm sorry. No. Well, we're talking about two different things. We haven't had any public hearing about the small solar stuff yet. We've not we've not asked the public at all about the small solar stuff. Secondly, with the large solar stuff, there was quite a diversity of opinion. Almost a 50-50 if you want to go, you know, anti. And there was a lot of gray, but it was almost almost 50-50 in the one meeting. In the one meeting, so. Yeah, the neighbors have been diligent in showing showing up. But is it is it the township trustees and the zoning board's job to keep? You have to make a decision. You just can't keep going on and say we're going to educate. We're going to educate. What you have to you put it out here. You have a time frame, the six month moratorium. Once that is exhausted. Then there has to be something done. You just can't keep going on. Well, the decision you know. made last time was that we, the decision made after the last hearing was that we were not going to ask for a restriction. So we did make a decision. We made a decision last time. It was unfortunate that Don had to miss that time period. Um, but we, we made a decision of not, it wasn't a non decision last time. So. But remember, we are talking about two different things. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I'm, I'm concerned about public input into um, into what an unelected commission of five people deciding, um, not deciding, but doing the initial, a lot of work up front before it might even be better to, rather than have them shoot holes in something you might come up with to have their input and being. So that's my only, that's. I, and I that's commend, only. I commend the board and the zone for doing what they're doing because it, it, it's a, it takes a lot of time and effort to put in there to try to get it right. And that's what we did when this whole project came into the area. We asked the governor and all the other people, elected officials, to put a moratorium on everything until everybody really understands all this stuff. And there's jumping around and money gets thrown around and all these things get entered into it and stuff. So I commend you guys getting it right the first time that you implement something like this. Because it's not easy. But don't, don't get me. I'm not against yeah, you guys yeah. at all. This isn't easy because you've got those opinions. You can't leave your house probably every day and walk down the street with somebody asking what's going on. Yeah. How's, how are you going to do this? I mean, so yeah. I understand. Yeah. It's tough. And when he says we, I think you're speaking from Xenia Township. Oh, everybody in the community. Oh, Green yeah. County, I mean, I'm talking. But you guys did, Cedar, did Cedarville. it. Oh, Cedarville. Oh, yeah. You farm in Xenia, you live in Cedarville. Yeah, I'm in Miami, Xenia, and Cedarville. Okay. 
I'll, I'll give you a tiny bit of information from, oh, I think it's 30 years now of, of planning and zoning that I've been involved in. The, the people that work on making the changes, writing the code, writing the comprehensive plan, I don't think I've ever worked with a group that wasn't diligent about doing that. But the public doesn't get involved until it's put forward and they see something they don't like. Mm -hmm. And then in they come. They're not there during the process, understanding why this was done and that was done. So it almost invariably is a two-stage process. And either at the end, the public gets interested and suddenly the room is full of people or they never get interested and it passes and then on down the road someone says well, where did this come from mm -hmm. are they allowed to be involved while you are building the first version the, it is always a public process they just show up to the commission meetings yeah there is there is the occasionally the trustees can't get together outside of the meeting because there are only three of them and two of them constitutes a quorum. So they're actually potentially conducting business. The zoning commission is five people. So occasionally two people get together and work on something in private, all right? They're, but then they're bringing that information that they've worked on to the full zoning commission. Okay? They might have put together, here's a strategy for us to, to work on or here's an agenda. But that's the only part of, of these kind of processes that I know of that aren't announced public meetings. And, but no, it's, it, is a, it is a completely open process. And that, that's what I'm saying is that at some, it's, it's general knowledge that everybody is welcome at these meetings. You, you can't keep advertising meeting after meeting because people are saying, or, or you, you have this feeling that people aren't involved you can't make people come to these meetings. We could be more inviting. Uh, how so? We could have a citizen's advisory. We could be more inviting. You, can, no. you can't have committee after committee after committee and, and, and convince people they have to come. If they're not proactive, they're never going to be. And I'm not, I'm not putting anything down. I'm just saying it's, if people aren't interested, not yeah, you're there. saying that when we're having our very first discussion of local small-scale zoning. So, I mean, this is the very first time it's mm -hmm. even... Uh, uh, there's been a lot I'm, of discussion. I'm not sold, in meetings, not but... In, but where? On the street. <laughs> okay, I've had people count. take me to lunch. I've had people... Okay, that doesn't count. Who? Why am I dead? All right. Well, and that's what he, what Don's saying, but you're saying the same thing on your side. You have people approaching and they want to... No, you said it. Yeah, I've had people approaching, but yeah. Um, and that they want to have these meetings. And that's great if they if if that's what we're, you're going to do in Miami Township. But just like you said, put it six months, get it out there, let's get it over with, and get the information to the, the zoning board makes their recommendations and you guys vote on it. Yes, What's the difference between our asking uh, the zoning commission to uh, propose uh, standards and uh, rules for encouraging them Asking them, encouraging them. Uh, just please get get started on that. Would you would you work on that? What's the difference between that and having a moratorium? I mean, at this point, it's not allowed, or is it? What's not allowed? Small scale solar. Yeah. But I can say to you that three things. One. There's no one has approached me for a permit to do small-scale solar. B, that I would interpret that based on my knowledge of the code. It's not an agricultural activity, and our, most of ours are residential, either one, and it's a commercial activity, and I would say no. Okay? That hasn't happened either, all right? But if I say no to anything and someone disagrees with my interpretation of the code, then they go to the Board of Zoning Appeals for an interpretation. 
but we haven't had the issue yet come up in Miami Township. All right, so it, it hasn't it hasn't tried our code as it stands now, but I think that it's fairly clear that generating electricity for sale. Suppose I bought a gasoline generator, okay, and and sold electricity to the grid. That's a commercial activity, isn't it? You know, we just we just had and, and, you know, a and whole, therefore would not be allowed. Would not be allowed. Now, to your point, Chris, about the lawyer didn't talk, think about rooftop and some things that a farmer might do to supply. No, not a farmer. A, a All, landowner. A, only a single family residence. A single family. Mom, dad, two kids that want well, to put solar. A farmer could right use energy on their farm, right? <coughs> if if they put it on their home, yes. Their single family structure. The intent is not to be sold back to commercial use. Right. Now, you know, that always gets a little sticky because some of the time you're generating more electricity than you need and, and, and most utilities really are willing to buy that or give you credit for it and go the other way. But So that yeah, would be allowed because you that, can't... You you're can't. not making money off of selling electricity. It's not a business when you're... If you, again, using my generator now, so if you buy a generator so when the power goes off you can have electricity, that's perfectly legal under our zoning, okay? If you have a bank of batteries that you charge up, it's for your personal use. If you have um, solar on your rooftop and you want to plan for your peak times, and therefore there are times when, when you're not using it and it has to go somewhere and you do get paid and it goes back and forth, you're saying there's, a, there's room for as a little As long as that back and forth ends up even and we haven't got most people again just on the reality and practicality don't have pockets deep enough to buy solar panels to generate more electricity than they need it isn't it isn't a good business investment all right it's a it's a nice idea to have them up there and not pay your utility bill but the investment in the panels isn't amortized anywhere near quickly at the present time so what about my question what's do we need a moratorium, or is there, in effect, already one? No, is there isn't. There isn't. There isn't a moratorium in effect. All there is is we're putting the responsibility of controlling zoning in Miami Township onto the board of zoning appeals. Yeah. Now, I'd, I'd say the the. What a moratorium would do would be, suppose that someone does come in tomorrow and challenges me saying no, okay? Then the Board of Zoning Appeals says, you, you definitely can't do anything for six months. There's been a yeah. moratorium established in Miami Township. Right. Otherwise, they can challenge it and win. Or they, they might. I don't, you know, who knows? But I, that's the only thing I can think, as Don points out, we're not allowing we haven't had the opportunity to allow or disallow small-scale solar yet. And I, I think I'd like to point out that there have been, there has been open commentary from Vesper regarding their desires to, um, if Kingwood is not successful in the OPSB and the appeals, that they are entertaining a smaller project in the same area. There has also been um, discussion with the county about another project in the area by Vesper, um, and they don't appear to be engaging the OPSB on that. So <clears throat> there is a very strong possibility, in my mind, and in, in my personal opinion, that uh, it will not be long until you are approached about a smaller project. So I think a moratorium is a very good idea. At least so until that we can have the regulations, not because we're necessarily. I know in your region of the township, there's a very strong um, there is an opinion approved, against it. I'm not. There is sure. an approved interconnect in Miami Township, and if I do not know if Vesper will be able to reutilize that interconnect. 
right? So they went to the PGM and they have an approved interconnect for Kingwood to connect right there in Miami Township. Um, I do not know if they can repurpose that in my personal opinion, it appears that they may attempt to do, it's sunk cost for them, right? They've already paid for that. So as and a business okay, person, why wouldn't I attempt to reuse that, right? And Xenia and Cedarville have restriction townships. They have both established zoning language for solar now, is that correct? Yeah. Oh, you're talking about small scale, that might be. Small scale, right. So, so less than 50%. Uh, 50, 50 megawatts, megawatts. yeah. Any, and, and 49 megawatts is not small. So we're talking, when we're saying small scale, it's kind of, it's making it sound really pleasant, right? Um, 49 megawatts technically falls in your purview, and that is enormous. Um, so, and it could have giant ramifications for you as township trustees, truthfully. Um, so I, I personally believe that a temporary moratorium until you have um, I'll use a word that the developers like to use, a robust uh, solar regulation, um, you're not properly protecting us, truthfully. Because I worry that without, even though I agree that Richard, with Richard when he says, our plan doesn't allow for it. It says protect farmland. And it's not for, you know, these other commercial uses. But it does not specifically say you won't do this. Uh, none, nothing in our zoning says you won't build a solar project of 49 megawatts on our farmland, right? And what are the risks to the township because it doesn't say that? Can they say, well, we don't like that and we're gonna sue you until you agree with us? You know, I, I just don't know that it would be wise to keep our head in the sand and not establish language specifically related to solar projects less than 50 megawatts. Um, and to be clear, we are not the first township that's going down this road. There are right. probably half a dozen townships that have already adopted in Greene County, have already adopted small scale solar that they've generated on their own, not through the auspices of, of a, a statewide uh, a, a plan like we have. I think in general, responsible, so responsible solar is the way to go, right? And if you're gonna be responsible about something, you also do your due diligence up front. Mm -hmm. um, and I think sure. putting a six month pause on small, 49 megawatts and less solar, right? Until we have the proper protections in place is key for us as your constituents. I have Maybe it's not a sticky question. Do do the trustees have the authority to to implement the the no solar for six months? Yes. Is that through the county or no? It's through our through our legal consultant. Through okay, the legal consultant says you can you can do that. So yes. in a sense, because you're doing people, something that they're the people who wrote the the uh, the, the draft plan. Right. So and they're, the moratorium they're township is, experts in. Uh, uh, because it's interesting to me that, that you can you can say no, but you can't say yes. Pardon? Well, the, only the, the the zoning can write a code that says you can have it. Okay, I all but you, understand. But the trustees can say you can't have it. Okay, I understand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I just, no, I, I'm not arguing for one thing or another. I just want to understand mm -hmm. why Vesper wouldn't challenge you guys if you put a moratorium. If, they if, could, they, if that's what you know they they could challenge us but we have the legal right to do it okay well that's that's yeah it's confused me now that you bring it up why why if we're not supposed to touch zoning as you said why we can put a moratorium on it just i guess to give our zoning commission the the, the reason this isn't do. touching zoning this is a moratorium on the construction of these facilities mm -hmm. it doesn't say whether they're allowed they're not allowed it just says you, you can't build it until it sounds a lot like Sony, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, okay. <clears throat> I would support moratorium. As this has been presented. Okay. Good. Let's, so do we want let's, let's get as far through the public portion of the mm -hmm. meeting. I, I'm taking over your chair, no, I'm sorry. Okay. 
before we yeah, get down to the see. yeas and nays. So as long as we're discussing this. Thank you. What you guys just discussed, will they be able to find a loophole, just like what you said, that a bus bird is coming? Will they be able to do what you just suggested and find a loophole that will work in their favor? Anybody can try. You know, there's <laughs> yeah, a that's, that's the way our legal system works. Anybody yeah, can they sue They can work anybody. their way up to the Supreme Court of the state of Ohio if they there really is. feel like spending that kind of time, effort, and money. There it is. Yeah. I don't think it's ever been tested, so that's going to be... We are very fortunate as township trustees that we have the state of Ohio's legal system behind us. They are our representatives, if, if we so choose. Our legal representative is the county prosecutor, and we could use them to, to at no cost to us to take it to the Supreme Court. We choose not to use the county prosecutor for a, few, a couple of reasons that we won't get into this evening, but if somebody wants to take us to court, we have all the, all the legal representation that we need for at any stage. Um, as long as we're discussing all this getting out of the table, if you'd indulge me a little bit, you guys all know this. Um, you all know that. I mean, originally, well, when we made the, yeah, the, first of all, when we had the hearing and we decided to not take any action at the time, um, what we told ourselves was that second part there where the commission can prohibit an individual proposed wind or solar project if it comes up. If we didn't have a restriction, and let's say they regrouped and wanted something, is there, we had told ourselves that we have 90 days and that they have to present us with the information, they have to hold a hearing and take our input. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know what changed for you, but that's okay. Current, um, and if anybody wants to speak to the fact that we don't just because you said that okay. they'll take our input that's our input we in my opinion we don't have input yet because we don't have the our zoning commission telling us what the residents to to their work the residents through a comprehensive plan or whatever what they want us to do but now we're talking about large scale solar and they don't have anything to do with that no but, okay. but we do and if we go and make a case during that period that that no, we do not want any solar whatsoever in Miami Township. We have n nothing to back that up with because we're, we don't have a zoning commission that, that's uh, But that they're, only, they're only talking about less than 50 megawatts. They're not talking about something that would be, that, that would, <coughs> I would, think would think be it would a public us, utility. I would think it would educate us to the point where we could make that kind of uh, commitment to the commission how we want it to go. And then the commission, the commission can at any time, whether they whether they change commission members because of elections or because, and I'm just getting this out on the table, or whether because they got an offer that was too good to refuse, mm -hmm. sure, they could flip with yes, a could. little bit of process. So what we're putting forth is our thoughts or our thoughts and prayers, basically. Okay. This, and, and they have said we welcome input from the townships, and they have expressed that they're committed to doing the will of this current iteration of the commission. Nicole, you were going to say something? Yeah, I'm, I would ask that for the large scale, I mean, it's so clear where the township residents stand on large scale. Like Joe said, we, we've been at this for four years. You guys know with Kingwood. Um, if you were at the town hall, if you were at the public hearing, I mean, there is no question how people feel in Miami Township about large-scale solar. So to me, it just seems, um, I don't know what the word I'm looking for, but just that it would be an automatic, as soon as it came up, that you could exclude um, agricultural land in Miami Township from large-scale solar. I mean, that's, you know, Cedarville Township did it, Xenia Township did it, that you would just automatically protect the ag agricultural land from large-scale solar. But you were at the hearing when it was almost 50-50, and the, all, um, Hope Taft and the entire national, um, oh, no, they were on your side. Um, there, there, it, it wasn't. 
Uh, that that was here. It was 50-50, but those are not township residents. Those are people. Uh, they don't. They're village. They're village. They're, oh, they're, 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 they're people who didn't bring them in. They're people who live in the village who will not be impacted by the sights, the sounds, the mm -hmm. the destruction. Yet, yet you're at, so. This is my best thing of where it's going to be. It's a little off. So you're asking us to do a moratorium on the entire township because the township residents over here don't like this project. Yet we're going to, there are scouts and there are things abuzz, people being approached on this entire half, which is adjacent to Bath Township and quarries and things. That's, and, I, and I'm sincerely asking, I mean, so did the county task you with, so I know the county has told the townships, we want you to have a public hearing to seek input from who? Did they ask you to seek public input from everyone, in your, all areas of the township, including any incorporated villages? Yes. Or was it the unincorporated areas no, only? Well, Miami Township includes every square foot of land. That well, includes the villages. That, that's actually a question I have too, Jennifer. I, I often wonder when we have these different hearings, could we say, well, Yellow Springs zoning applies to the villages of Yellow Springs for the same reason that um, Yellow Springers cannot sit on the two commissions because it's not their zoning. It, it doesn't apply to them. I, I've actually wondered that question. Are they allowed? I mean, could we say you're not in the jurisdiction of you have your own home rules. The reason I ask I that is because the OPSB only, the projects that go to the OPSB, it's my understanding they can only be put in the unincorporated areas anyway. So. There would be any room in the unincorporated area. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Some, some incorporations <laughs> include lots of, look at Fairmore. <laughs> they have lots of unbuilt land in the city. You talked about Bath Township and the quarries, but that's not farmland. So that could be more. <laughs> right, but it's it's already been ruined. Right. So then, so you could say suggest, yeah, we put them there, but not on the other side of town where it's not well, except for not every way. not everybody might agree with the people in this room who've been effect, super affected, and I think that's what what drives a lot of you to come out. Um, not every Buddy agrees that it, solar wouldn't be a good use of some of this land here. We're seeing rapid encroachment of other types of development from that side. I don't, I don't know enough to know how far that development will come, but um, I think you say overwhelmingly the township doesn't want industrial solar. When I, and I'm saying overwhelmingly the people who have to deal with this gigantic thing in their backyards don't want solar, exactly. but there's a whole lot of township. And so if we do a moratorium in the entire township. Have you done anything to identify which zones might be appropriate for solar? No, that, the, originally when I asked the commission if we could do it for just for a period of time, that was my thought. It's like, well, let's, let's take the, the, um, the scenic river people who are against it, their, their, their claims of runoff, and, and let's take the, um, you know, and I know you say that every, soil, every bit of soil in the township is great, but I, when, I, when I look at the soils and the terrain and the, all the drainage on the west side, I don't see the beautiful prime farmland which is up by Cedarville. When you go up Grinnell Road and you get to Clifton and you just see this well-drained blanket of um, beautiful farmland, so I don't know. It, I don't know if there's any, we haven't done any ranking of soil, ranking of areas. And originally when I asked the commission, could, could we do a restriction for a period of time, that's what I had in mind. And we had a, a group, the Climate Action Committee, who wanted to do things like that, and it was based at Agraria, and it, I just don't, that all fell apart, but I mean, Michelle, Burns had offered to do some mapping for us and identify that, but it's strictly manpower, you know, um, well, resources. Soil I'm talking, to the whole you know, township. Um, um, it isn't something that needs to be mapped if you're trying to 
discern which is the, the best soil for farming and which is less good for farming. But overall, on average, we have good soil for farming. I understand that. And it, well, isn't, and it isn't exclusively in one end or the other of the township. So at any rate, um, yeah, so when you say it's, it's obvious what the people want, it's obvious this struggle, we've all been together, and I have great heart for everybody who's you know, lost years of their lives working on this. But when you look at it this way, we're asking. But none of those. When I watch, when I go to a, a public hearing, I mean, a, a hearing <coughs> that we have, uh, I don't count people's positions. I listen to their thought. I make my decision about how I vote. Okay. I was responding to Nicole's well, I'm, ass assertion, and, okay. and I'm listening to myself. I say, you know, what's coming on the western side? That do, is solar any worse than? Do the taxpayers of Miami Township know how much you guys have had to pay just for Kingwood? It's, it's public knowledge. I've, a few people have asked. Well, um, we, we were going to separate yeah. I, I have one two more questions. Yeah, yeah. The, yeah, we were going to get it all on the table and then we're going to separate. Community size um, the and other the thing is, um, utility scale. According to Jeff Uri, who um, I have great respect for, his quote was, the, it was never about the money for us. The township stood to get a lot of tax revenue. I, I, he may be, I don't know him well, he, he said we wouldn't have to pass another levy for a long time if we went ahead with Kingwood. And the um, school district was it said to, e to benefit even more. I don't know how that would actually play out with the pilot tax thing, but he said in the tens of millions, and I don't think the people on this end of the township are of the few people I've told where it would have, Kingwood would have benefited the Cedarville schools a great deal. Yellow Spring, I mean, there we have, there's, there's another school district and, and that end of town. So I, I guess I'm just not convinced that everybody in the so You have to be, be real convinced. careful about which schools it would impact. I, it's been a long time since I've looked at Pilot and how it supports or doesn't support the various schools within the area that the pilot payments would go to. So I would be very careful to make sure you understand that it only goes, I don't know that it goes to all the schools in the township. No, right? it doesn't. So that would be careful have, about that. It would, the, all of Kingwood would have gone to Cedarville schools. And I, I've actually read some articles yeah. today. That's not accurate. That's not true. Oh, oh so, some of it's Xenia schools. Well, it depends, it depends on Again, I'm not fresh on those rules, so you've got to be careful about okay. exactly what it says. Okay. Um, yeah, I've never quite understood and it has to do how with the, the tax schools structure. are supposed to benefit other than in any, I mean, they're as a company going to give money to the schools? Tax revenue. No, they avoid Our all the tax taxes revenue. because schools they pay payments don't in don't get life. any more money. Well, when, Richard, I don't know why change. when I, when... The law is written that way. You have to... There are... School districts in the state of Ohio generously benefiting from large solar facilities. It's right called now. it's called payment in lieu of taxes. So they're avoiding the full tax load that they would otherwise be charged in lieu of fixed payments. And I don't know how the, the, the school districts do. But well, that's what I'm saying. If the school districts are getting money directly from the developer, then. It's whatever they mm, agree to do. I, mean, I, don't but know, I don't know how that's working. Except for a tiny bit of inside village, schools, when a bond or a levy is passed, get the amount of money that the levy generated the day they passed it. And it doesn't make any difference how much property values go up. Their income does not go up. Well, I that don't know then, Richard, when you... You have a bigger base the look next up, time. When you look up the number of school districts that are benefiting from okay. from large solar facilities, 
Well, I need to find I'm out how talking, they're benefiting. Um, I don't know how they're doing it, but they are. Well, that's that's an important thing to understand. Yeah, it is. Okay. Which school districts are benefiting? Yeah, in my opinion, two school districts. Like, I'm going to look at. I'm going to look that yeah, up. Please do. I, I, so the Cedar Hill yeah, School District. I don't understand, don't understand we're what we're talking about. I thought we. Okay, we Don, this two, is what we're talking about. Two we, things. We put off these discussions. Mm -hmm. Month after month after month, they were getting, and, and there are some educated people in the room, and there's some questions that I've been wished okay. to, to discuss, and I would like to just take this opportunity to, to, to get these questions answered, to have back and forth, to have it in a, in a form that people can view who aren't at the meeting, and then I promise you I won't take much longer. And I, that might, have, in fact, that might be. That might be it. Um, I guess, no, that's not it actually. Um, so we could, uh, the options for us as far as the large school, school goes is to request a restriction over the entire Miami Township, um, request a restriction for specific areas of the Miami Township because the law is really written, we can, we can identify certain areas and um, I guess because because they told us we can request a restriction for a specific length of time, such as six months of a year, and fourth, we could take no action. Um, and I I don't know because I don't know enough about spot zoning. Just just throw it out there since we're having a clearinghouse right now. Would it be unsavory or even illegal? to ask for a restriction on one area and not another. They have no, six, you can do that. You have what they call exclusion zones. You can identify yeah. whatever you want yes. to do any area. So yeah. that wouldn't be, cons I mean, we wouldn't have to have a good reason. We wouldn't have to say, well, this doesn't, the, su the soils are superior up there and the people don't well, want it and it's, that's the go off of soil types. Uh, right there, go off the soil types. What can be generated on that soil compared to the Bath Township or the, 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 the West Side? There when is data did that theirs, they, they did not just only for farm ground, they looked for green space, for residents and everything else. There was a little bit more in the equation. It just wasn't specifically farm ground. So you could go on that, that side of town where John Bryan and the, uh, the flat ground is at. And you can even go up into the other western side of it and, and select parts. But you can identify what you want as exclusion zones for solar. And we don't have to have a, a darn good reason? like. No, it's, it's because you're representing the community and stuff that you want to have that for future things, whatever you want to do. Yeah, so again responsible solar equals due diligence right mm -hmm. so you can you can uh, as a as a township resident i would like to see things like the quality of the land the recreational plans for that area um what the what our plan our our what is the plan called comprehensive, right? comprehensive plan <laughs> Uh, what that says we're supposed to be doing with the land, right? Even if it's not updated, is it not updated because they think it's still current? Um, you know, the comprehensive plan should play into that, the type of soil, what your plans are for that soil, what the residential, you know, picture looks like as far as, you know, the quantities of homes, the number of individuals that would be impacted because yeah. you're talking about their, their property values, which again impacts taxes and everything else. So it's a long stream of data that you can use to analyze what areas of the township are best suited for that. And I'll add to that, um, the Scenic Rivers claims of runoff and um, We would be fools not to consider runoff. And sedimentation. Um, the problem I'm having with that only is the, um, the resources to do it. The manpower and the mm -hmm. undertaking did the county say that you could revise the exclusion zones at a later time, or or did the legal count? Did you did the county lawyer weigh in on that? Whether it's not necessarily permanent, right? You can vote for the exclusion zones and then vote later to remove them. That's correct. The and I assume if you can. okay, and I assume if you vote certain areas, or let's say you did today, right? Uh, hypothetical, you voted to to 
exclude all of them until you could identify the exact areas that it was appropriate for within the township. Sure, you that's know, you could update it later. That's somewhat in the in the mindset of this six month waiting you know waiting period yeah. to to do that kind of work. Because yeah, it sounds like to me the township has not had an opportunity to assess which areas of the township would be appropriate for solar, and in the interest of your constituents and due diligence, right, for responsible solar, you should have those areas identified before it's put there. The appropriate location should be identified before the projects are put there. The unfortunate thing about the OPSB process is it doesn't follow that. Yeah. And it's the only way to make sure that that happens. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm comfortable with saying no, uh, I'll call it supersize solar, no, no utility scale solar in the township. Forever? And, I mean. The, yeah. Um, the, you know, if, if I don't have support for that, I'll, I'll support something else. Uh, I want solar in the township and the devil's in the details for smaller scale, uh, and that's where I think we should be focusing. Uh, my understanding from the current commission is that if we make a request, they will then go through their process of having a hearing and whatever, and that they would they would follow through on our request. And that, that, that is a question. They require us to have a hearing. Would we say, okay, that hearing we had in November was the hearing? Yes. Or this tonight is the hearing? A combination of them, probably. I, and and I'm, I'm not even sure. Did we, my understanding from them was that we advertised, publicized, that we wanted input. Uh, did the actual format and procedure, they're open. The, for November we did. I don't think yeah. we did for this one, but for this November was publicized. This meeting was publicized. I mean, we found out about it. Uh, yeah, it was publicized. And, no, but they will go. The through, website. They will go through their own the formal was, process. Yeah. That's our public information. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Is that if they're so, interested enough, people that are in tune with what all this has been about, they are following. And that's what I'm saying. Is yeah. I, I agree when you to, talk to, to the people that, that to on the street, to a certain degree. I think when it's in your backyard, it's a whole lot more motivated. Well, I'm mean, just asking you if you talk to people on the street, like you said you do. No, you said I talk to people. I'm <laughs> sure you do. But you talk to people, and I'm sure some of them that you talked to prior to this meeting knew that there was a meeting. That you told them we're going to have a meeting. Where they at? Well, I mean, it and this is a very <laughs> talked about on Facebook, and. You know, one of the, the most active posters, I saw her working, I pulled over and I went over and talked to her. And that may be why she's not here tonight, I don't know. <laughs> uh, but it's, it's been in the wind. It's, it's been in the light. Uh, it's been in the wind. <coughs> but, That's how, uh, well, again, the, the, commissioners, it was in the wind. The county it commission was in the wind. Uh, would also have a hearing and or, you know post yeah uh, again so, we're talking about utility scale yeah right, at the so, moment i am at the moment although we started out talking about so it, i think so chris it sounds like you have three three things that based on what i'm hearing because you were pushing for um utilizing the plan or an, the the zoning commission's opinion of how our plan reads for that um, well i'm not and, but pushing I, for it i'm that is the procedure uh, I'm just I'm pushing for us to follow our set procedure. Uh, I mean that's what I feel like my responsibility is in my position. Oh, well, I was just referring to um, for what the county has asked the townships to do mm -hmm. before recommending or not recommending right exclusion zones. Mm -hmm. They wanted public hearings, so you've essentially got or public meetings public meetings. Mm -hmm. You've got two so far. Mm -hmm. You've got today and the, what you said it was November. I've lost track of time. Mm -hmm. um, and you also have what Richard has always said is, you know, 
the, the, the stance that the township has regarding these types of projects is the, the, the comprehensive plan and the current zoning. So you really have three or four sources of data you know, feeding, feeding that decision um, uh, yeah. to support whatever you take to the county, I would think, right? I, I agree with you, except for the less of the comprehensive plan. I think it really predates any of the emergence of this potential land use. There are references to solar in the comprehensive plan. That, that obviously, yes, it was written prior to people yeah. seeing it as economically practical in this part of the world to put out solar arrays. People were putting up solar arrays in other parts of the country long before that. Yeah. Uh, it, it suddenly become a very popular concept. And the, and the prices come down. Yeah, there are other there are other reasons. The, you know, so but okay. Writing legislation is kind of straightforward until you you get to the part of why are we writing this? Are we writing it because we want more solar opportunities in Miami Township? Are we writing it to, to reflect the wishes of uh, the majority of, of residents of Miami Township? Are we, why are we changing the code? Or, or asking, I mean, in fact, we're not even asking the code to be changed. We're just asking to have something in the code that specifically addresses this. Because we feel like, because it isn't specifically addressed, we need something. The code is, so far the code has not failed us in any way, shape, or form. All right. But the, the issue is, are, are you, you know, as you as representatives of the township, or the the zoning commission is representative of the township. Do we need to make a change? And will that? And and we and don't have that, the information for that. And that is okay. the job of the zoning commission, right? Okay. And the public. Well, it's they, through the zoning commission. And the public through the zoning. Well, look, if we went through this. The zoning commission is a public mm -hmm. process. Mm -hmm. so. Well, I, I think that uh, we should have uh, enough capacity uh, in our uh, smaller region, not necessarily township, uh, to provide enough electricity for our needs. Miami Township? In our region. It doesn't have to be yeah, Miami I don't, Township. I, I can't personally connect that to the decision we have to make tonight, but... Well, but that's, that's why I pursue solar. See, that's one of the arguments you can we make. We need what some our, solar. quote, fair share? Or should we just capitalize because Vesper wants to make stuff here, and suddenly they're generating far more electricity than anybody well, in all of Green County yeah. use? And I think we're getting into the discussions that have to take place at the Zoning Commission. Um, because there are people who, that's true. who feel like we should be producing more electricity than we ourselves use for the sake of the um, climate change. So, um, do we have a motion? Are we, uh, first, let me ask: Is there anybody who wants to speak who hasn't had a chance to speak? I know that my wife wants to speak. Okay. She just went to the restroom. Okay. I'll, I'll say something else. I don't think most of us. Most, and some of you probably know far more than I do. But in my reading, for example, Vermont as a whole state has put together systems of regulating small-scale solar, and they limit small-scale solar to very small. Okay, I mean bigger than what you're using for yourself, but their maximum generation is far less than fifty thousand. Okay, but they spread them out all over. Right? That's a strategy that nobody's talked about. We just talk about, can you get permission to do anything up to 50,000? Well, that's because there was, there was no central planning in this whole, the whole concept of 
going solar. So where did there was no central planning. It was it was, yeah. it was so, piecemeal from the start. So we're talking about do we give ourselves a chance to do central planning? Well, I was thinking central planning like on a state level. I think uh, California, it's under the assumption that every new structure has to have solar on the roof. Yeah. So why uh, why can you say go more that way? So Maryland, where did the fifty thousand come from? It's not fifty thousand; it's fifty megawatts. I mean, fifty. Yeah. 50. Well, 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 it's technically that's, 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 that's from the state. It's from the, the state, state, the legislature. Uh -huh. um, everything fifty megawatts and above is a public utility. I see. And Maryland, you're right that the state has not done a comprehensive look at where solar should be in the state, how much the state needs, which has left us all scrambling. Which has put it in our lap, the, the latest legislation that was passed puts it in the township's lap to determine what the township needs. Not only is uh, the, the state you know, lacking that, but uh, we were complaining about, or at least I was, about a year or two ago where uh, Ohio Farm Bureau wasn't doing enough. They've changed their attitude. To, in solar too, in, in property rights, that was the big thing, personal property rights. Now, they do a public policy thing every year. It's updated every year. Now the topic of solar, wind, and all this stuff has come to the top because it is an issue statewide. Now they are changing gears a little bit. They're wanting to protect the farmland a little heavier on the protection side than giving people the property rights in order to just do whatever they want to. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. isn't that why the companies came here in the first place, Joe? Because, because it was because easy. the laws were yeah, they yeah. take advantage yeah. of it. I mean it, we we all have to agree that four or five years ago or even a little bit before that I experienced it it was a gold rush, the new gold rush, because it it was so easy to come in and mm -hmm. open fields and easy construction rule regulations were limited it was just so easy so if you get in the top floor it was making a break and i did say in the very beginning why are you putting one mega solar facility in one or two or half a dozen spots and we were talking about uh, tornadoes and all this why don't we why aren't we talking to each community like a Xenia in our area put a 50 megawatt in and we benefit from co-op do all these things but that's not from the developer they weren't going to make money that way when they get a certain size they make more subsidies and money tax credits and everything else it's an equation of money making it's not about benefiting the planet I, and don't get me wrong they do not care about the planet they use it as a lot of days. There's a lot of days in your statement. Yeah. Well, I'm just saying, down the smaller ones, absolutely, they're looking at it and, and just dissecting it and, and implementing things that are a benefit to the local communities and everybody else. And that's what we should be looking at. But these mega size, they are owned by companies overseas and investment. Uh, investors know more. Did you know that? Mr. Krutchik, did you? Did you support the um, the Samsung proposal in, in, in Xenia Township? I went down there and I said that this is the perfect scenario. And uh, uh, yeah, Kevin, DeWine, Kevin and DeWine is their PR person. I talked to the gentleman from Samsung and stuff. This is the perfect scenario. It's tucked back in the least productive farmland in that particular area. It's bump, bumping up against the city of Xenia and you can't even see it. It's wrapped around. It was about 30 megawatts? Or uh, yeah, I believe 20. it's about 30 to 35. 20. So, yeah. I, I, so, in that case, there wasn't in some overseas devil. It was the same, same zone. They're, they're That's not a utility scale, scale yeah. project. Okay. Yeah. Mrs. Garrison, you had something to say? Um, to speak to yeah. to well, well I just I mean is it is it that forum I last time everybody was speaking and I just wrote something <laughs> to speak to but I don't know that I even need to tonight well, it's up to you <laughs> the floor is yours if you like well, I want you to go on to yeah, we were move to right yeah. okay. well this is about yeah. large scale I mean are you on that yet yes we are okay wait I, no we're I thought we're, we're, talking back and forth a we're, we're getting it all out and then we're going to go with okay. this and then okay. yours and okay 
Okay, I'm just going to read this. Um, I just thank you for the opportunity to speak regarding Kingwood utility scale solar project in Miami Township. I do not disagree with solar as an alternate or a supplemental form of energy. What I do strongly disagree with is the installation of Kingwood's utility scale solar project on viable farmland. My concerns are um, environmental issues consist of <clears throat> the release of toxic, toxic substances in the event of solar breakage due to weather. According to a, a 2019 NOAA publication, Greene County has the highest total damage figure of all Ohio counties and is estimated to have the highest estimated future annual losses of all counties. The publication sources were the National Weather Service, NOAA, and the Ohio Emergency Management Agency. Personally, I have experienced a tornado in 2018 and another with large hail in 2019, resulting in $100,000 worth of damage to our house and um, our barn. <clears throat> um, I question how will the toxic panel, panels be disposed of? Um, I've never heard, um, we've asked that, I've never gotten a, a clear answer on that. Um, I've heard that they are shipped to a coast like the West Coast and then they go to third world countries to be disposed of. Um, I don't know if that's true, but that's what I've heard. Um, I, I'm concerned about possible well contamination as well as how much viable water will be used to maintain the solar panel system. Um, <clears throat> Will our water supply be in jeopardy? Um, the effects of building a utility scale solar project and the ongoing operation on wildlife and bird life are also a concern. Um, the effects of building the utility scale solar project and the ongoing operation oh, on wildlife and bird life, I said that right. Uh, constant inverter noise and noise resulting from solar panel movement. Um, it won't affect people in Yellow Springs, but it sure will affect us in the neighboring homes around there. Um, <clears throat> aesthetic concerns include looking at an industrial area instead of beautiful farmland. Kingwood representatives assure us that they will plant wildflowers. Until I moved to a rural area, I had no idea of how prolific work, uh, weeds can be. They grow six feet tall. We've had them on our property. <laughs> Um, I doubt that wildflowers will keep weeds at bay, and then who's going to maintain it? You know, we've never gotten answers to those questions. Um, um, I do believe that property values will fall. Uh, would any of you pay fair market value uh, for a property adjacent to or in view of an industrial looking area? I would not. I also believe that Ohio is not the best place for solar. Our days of sunshine and winter are few. Um, why are they not looking for, to install um, solar in Arizona, Nevada, California, and other states where sunshine is abundant throughout the year? Um, another concern is the company itself. Change has been constant. The company was originally known as Lendlease, then changed to Vesper, and then changed to Aviation Renewable Energy. Kingwood is now on its fifth or sixth project manager. There is um, something to be said about management continuity. Um, do they keep track of all the promises they make to landowners? Um, <clears throat> lastly, I fear that trading our farmland for utility scale solar installations could have a very negative effect on our food supply. That being said, uh, said I respectfully request that you vote to ask the Greene County Commissioners to exclude Miami Township from large scale utility scale solar projects as well as smaller commercial projects. Thank you. All right, Chris, do you have a... Anyone else? A, uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, I have a resolution um, this evening that I'd like to read. It's medium, it's one page. And I think I, it should be read for the, for the record. Uh, and then we'll see how it goes. This is a resolution to enact a moratorium on all small-scale solar facilities in Miami Township, Green County, Ohio. It reads, whereas RC section 519.213 confer power on the Board of Trustees and the Board of Zoning Appeals with, quote, respect to the location, erection, construction, reconstruction, change, alteration, maintenance, removal, use, and enlargement of any small-scale uh, solar facility, whether publicly or privately owned, end quote, as well as, quote, the use of land for that purpose, end quote. And whereas the board 
Staff and Miami Township Zoning Commission need time to review and evaluate the provisions of RC 519-213 and potentially prepare and implement certain amendments to the Miami Township Zoning Resolution and whereas the board finds that it is in the best interest of the residents and property owners of Miami Township, Green County to allow time to accomplish these objectives. So, resolution, now therefore be it resolved by the Board of Trustees of Miami Township, Green County, Ohio, that we resolve that the board believes that it's in the best interest of the township to institute a moratorium on small-scale solar facilities as those are defined as those are defined in RC 519, etc. the same one, to allow time for the board staff and zoning commission to review and evaluate the provisions of said resolution and potentially prepare and implement certain amendments to the Miami Township Zoning Resolution. Be it further resolved that the board hereby finds that the significant legitimate public interest, excuse me, the board finds that significant legitimate public interests exist and that temporary preservation of the status quo by suspending all action regarding small solar facilities, including but not limited to the construction and or the installation of new small solar facilities and the modification or expansion of existing small solar facilities is necessary to achieve the legitimate <coughs> be it further resolved that the board hereby enacts a moratorium on small-scale solar facilities for a purpose, excuse me, for a period of six months from the adoption of this resolution unless otherwise repealed or amended by the board. Be it further resolved that the board finds and determines that all formal actions of this board concerning and relating to the passage of this resolution were taken in an open meeting of the board and that all deliberations of this board that resulted in such formal actions were in a meeting open to the public in compliance with all legal requirements. Be it further resolved that this resolution shall be in full force and effect immediately upon its adoption. Um, and then I suggest, or I would move, I don't know, whatever, to add the additional one line. Um, uh, under resolution uh, one, two, three, third paragraph. <coughs> Finds a significant legitimate public interest in so suspending all acts regarding to solar facilities limited to but construction and installation of new facility modification expansion of all small facilities. At, at that point, I would add the line uh, with the exception of single family residential um, structures. Okay. That's a resolution before us. Is there a motion to adopt a resolution? This would be 2023-26. So 26 issue. You're not making that motion? You can move it, Chris. I can. Uh, I will make the motion to adopt resolution 2023-26. And I'll second it. Bring a motion and a second. Is there further discussion? I have one question. We haven't asked the Zoning Commission if they'll take on this for the next six months. Well, we'll get to that. Okay. Anything else, Chris? I mean, no, we're done. Okay, you're good. Nope. Um, can we vote? It's been moved and seconded. Um, resolution 2023 26 moratorium on small scale solar in Miami Township as enumerated by Mr. Moocher. Mr. Mooser? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Ms. Moyer? Am I allowed to qualify? Um, yes, and I intend to encourage public involvement. I hope you do. I hope you'll work. Also, I don't know. No. Re the resolution yeah. then has been approved. <laughs> okay. If I could get a copy of that, please, before. Sure. Thank you. I have to add the line and then I'll get it to you. Thank you. Uh -huh. now, Mr. Hollister, do you have a a resolution? <clears throat> no, I have a motion. I move that Miami Township Board of Trustees requests the Green County Commissioners prohibit utility scale solar electric installations in Miami Township. Without a time period. Without a time period. We have a second. Well, I guess it.
doesn't go anywhere. In my discussion with uh, commissioners, <clears throat> as long as they're in office, they informally said, if you then came and asked to remove prohibition, that they would support the removal. But that's not my, 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 the purpose of my uh, request is that it be just prohibited. I've never had a motion that was a second before. So well, then it dies for lack of seconds. Then it dies for lack of seconds. That's and what it is. So, um, I am happy to hear that it could be, okay, I would, for, I am open to an exclusionary zone that didn't include the entire township. If it was written as a resolution. If, I, I didn't know that we would, we, I wasn't clear. And well defined. We Right? Yeah, that's what I asked. Would it have to be well defined? Do I have to do I have to give a reason? No, do, no, do I'm just, to, I'm just saying. Would we have to give a reason why? I mean, do we have a, a compelling reason yeah, why so. one area uh -huh. over another? Maybe the compelling reason is the density of housing or the the dissatisfaction of the neighbors. <coughs> the well, why is that my understanding from the commissioners the is that they would follow through on our request. If we feel we need. No, I'm thinking about. I'm, talking about I'm, I'm thinking more but about legal liability. So you said it'd be, it'd be best to well define it. I'm talking about legal liabilities, not just permission. Nicole, you were, were going to add something. Yeah, I was going to ask um, Don. Would you be comfortable doing a motion for the Kingwood project area at this point to exclude? I mean, clearly you know how residents feel about that area. Well, now keep in mind you can't grandfather in an exclusion to an existing project. We understand that. Correct, well, Nicole. Do you understand? You cannot grandfather in. Well, you can't exclude an existing project. Right. It's something that's already before you can't the use the word Kingwood. You could say on the east side on of Miami Township. Right. Like everything to the south. Well, you, you south certainly could, but, but that would not exclude Kingwood from. Right. It could use seating. Well, Correct. right. Okay. But right. if they yes. came back Correct. with a, a difference, absolutely. Proposal. You're right. That starts a whole new clock. East of Clifton. Uh, oh. Am I turned around to south, south of Clifton, south possibly? Of Clifton. I'm you, could, you could say east south. of the Little Miami River. You want a boundary. Or east of 68, east to, of better, 68. to better protect the Little Miami. 68. East of 68. Between 68. Yeah, well, yeah. So, well, I'm I don't know what area you're concerned about. of, you know, the Jacoby uh, Valley, the, um, but I, I would support uh, something that's just the southeast part of the township, but uh, I mean, there are, <clears throat> I'm told that there are properties along the Clark County line, or at least one, that has uh, been, the uh, option has been purchased. I'm not really in favor of defining this motion at this meeting, to vote on at, as we speak. We could define it better and bring it to the next meeting. I'd be very willing to hear okay. that. I'll type up the same thing. <laughs> If you happen to look at Xenia's, I mean, they do have designated areas. Okay. So. Um, where would I find that? Um, I suppose so once well, it's... I should call <laughs> Alan. Yeah, okay, okay. Start. Here, here is something to consider, because it, it makes you think both ways. Designate where you want them. Yeah. Don't yeah, say can, where you don't want yeah, them, we say where that. you do want them. Yeah, well, that's what she talked about earlier. Well, 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 but that's never been clear well, well, where that, that is. Well, where we, do you yeah. want your 350 well, we, they're not, we're, They haven't given us the ability, the uh, permission to designate where we want them. They they didn't give us the permission to designate where we don't want them. Right, but yeah, once but you we know can what use you that, want, it's everything else. We can use that to 
specify where we don't want it. As someone who's been through this for a really long time, though, I would ask that you don't delay establishing the exclusion zones while you're trying to figure that out, because we all know that that could take a very, very long time. So I would ask, like it has been recommended, that you do something to protect the people in the east side of your township, because we are tired. East side of your township. East side. East of, East of 68, East John Bryan, yeah. all of that is at risk simply because of the transmission lines going through there. Mm -hmm. yeah. you, you, there's another boundary in the township that might work, which is the boundary between the Yellow Springs School District and the Cedarcliff School District. If you're an F7, F-17, you're in Cedarville, your parcel, tax parcel number. If you're F-16, you're, I'm not sure I've got the numbers, but, yeah. but there, it's, it splits the township in a line that, that runs somewhat parallel to 68, but a little bit to the east of it. We allowed to use that as a consideration? Well, I mean, this they don't tell you way you yeah, can't of use drawing it. this Whatever. line you're talking yeah. about. Yeah. Okay. When I first I'm talked to county that. commission, I just, uh, commissioners, I, I said, uh, where, what is <clears throat> that would prohibit it from our agricultural zone? But it's simpler just to say the whole township. But again, we want to okay. have so get into other specifics. That's okay. But I, you know, I'm, a, I'm as concerned about utility scale. Uh, anywhere in the township, I mean that's huge. It's bigger than the Glen, the, the one that's been proposed. And that's not a very big one nowadays. But then I look at the area around Kroger's and the new car wash and the miles and acres and acres and acres and acres of concrete, and I think we we and are all the decimated. We are far east of that. that used to be all, so I think okay, My phrase. <laughs> right? I mean, I mean Kroger. That right. was a wetland. Yep. Yeah, so I, what I'm saying is that, just to cut off this short, you're concerned about solar, but when I look at some of the alternatives coming from the west, I don't, I don't see solar as a, um, the well, most damaging thing that could happen. I follow closely who owns everything between here and Byron. So do I. And? The biggest owner is? Uh, I mean, what airborne does, cement. Oh, but they don't own in our township so, because we yeah, okay. prohibit. Yeah. So, not. so we're open and to. And the biggest owner of land between here and Byron so, in Miami Township is passed away, and his five children don't live anywhere near the state of Ohio. And that's true. Who knows where that's going to go? Yep. Okay, let's not get into that. Okay, and that might not, solar might not be its worst fate, is what I'm saying. Um. So. I think we can promise that we'll have some iteration of this for next meeting. Is that what we're saying, folks? Okay. I, I or or at, we could we could have competing resolutions. Who knows? We could have a, a smorgasbord of resolutions. We could have a number of drafts. I, 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 I will I will bring another one. But I I'm still. <laughs> I'm yeah. still for the whole township being um, off. I really want to thank you guys for all your patience and working this through. I know some urge, some urge me not to sift through it as much, but it, we've really been putting off a, a conversation for a long time. Um, and so now we're on to our next thing, which is an executive committee meeting. Can I ask one question? Yes. When is your next meeting? May 15th. Thank you. First and third Monday. Of the month. Always at five o'clock. Yes. Always at five. So you can get to the seven o'clock village council meeting. Right? <laughs> <laughs> if you're fast. Do you want to finish agenda items before oh, we go to the executive? We have session? more agenda items. You said you did. I have one. That's all. Uh, we we standing committees second meeting of the month new business remember that we did that brief executive commission I don't see another agenda item. I have one. Okay. <laughs> I think it's important that we uh, put on record that at our next meeting, we will be holding a public hearing regarding uh, uh, Miami Township Records Disposal uh, Plan. Okay. 
Yeah. You just can't wait to shred those old records. Oh, no, I cannot. I like shredding those old records. And maybe we should maybe not call it a public hearing, but uh, like let, let it be known um, that we'll be discussing large solar next time so that sure. it's more evidence we could give the co to the commission when we asked mm -hmm. for And where do you publicize that now? Website and our, our two designated places for public information are website and the bulletin board inside the vestibule. Okay, so that's <laughs> no, 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 I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. We, we don't have a uh, anyone who's requested that they be emailed. No, no. not to my knowledge. So, yeah. So if it was a if it yes, was a, um, an actual I guess public hearing, we, if we called it a public hearing, we could um, advertise it in the paper. Yeah, sure. Well, there's two kinds of. You can invite the public anytime. It's not a hearing. Except except for that, just to cover the language that the commission wants before they, we, they we uh, for, didn't for specify a hearing to me. Okay. Okay. But we'll just, just say public hearing. I'll I'll. I'll Make sure the public knows. Specific. Mm -hmm. And anything else, Chris, are done. Be sure you're specific on your request for a bank session. Specific do I to the code. Ask for a motion. You can do that, but you have <laughs> you have to say what you'd like to go to executive session for the purpose of a specific reason, as I, stated in that list that. Yeah, I would like to go to executive session for the purpose of discussing a personnel matter. Nope, that's not good enough. It's got to be a specific personnel compensation. Dis compensation, discipline, promotion. A personnel compensation matter. Okay, there you go. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now you know where that other $100,000 is. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Marilyn, would, would, could you just tell me the schools that benefit? I, I want to look this up myself because I'm really interested in this. I just did a spot Google. I I, I read about Acadia schools. Acadia. Did you did you Google it? Not to get it? No, I knew executive session, right? Yes, we did. Yes, mm -hmm. we are now back on her. I know. Do motion to re-enter. No. We are going to re-enter regular session. Is there a motion on the floor oh. or on the table? Well, I would move that uh, we increase the compensation for our minute teacher to one hundred dollars. What, <laughs> Mr. Spendabout? I'll second. Wholeheartedly. Any further discussion? Hearing none, may we vote? I, I don't mind. Is this allowed? You know, I, you caught me off guard completely. Um, it's been moved and seconded to increase the compensation for records taker for to one hundred dollars per meeting. Mm -hmm. Mr. Hollister. Yes. Mr. Moosier. Yes. Ms. Moyer. Yes. Motion is approved. With my thanks. <laughs> and now I. Our thanks. And you want to say something about minutes? No. Okay. And then I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. By acclamation. At 7.09.